Yeah, so I work for uh, Scottish Government for the Care Inspectorate. And the Care Inspectorate is the agency that's responsible for the regulation, the licensing, the inspection of all care services for children and also adults as well. And when Peter Petra asked me to come and speak, I thought, my goodness, what on earth are the Swedes wanting someone from Scotland to come and talk to them about children and about children's rights and about children's well-being? Because you lot, we see you as an absolute leader in the field. We've only just banned smacking. We've only just made that illegal in Scotland. We're way behind on so many fronts. And when I look at the universal childcare that you've had for a long time, I look at the maternity, the paternity leave that you have, I see not a child-friendly city that we have in Stockholm. I see children with lots of play areas compared to Scotland. And I think, why? Really interesting. Maybe there is something in terms of the standards, the policies. So I come with a we offer in terms of the perspective of someone from the government, someone who does inspection of services, and just tell you a wee story of what's happened in Scotland and why we've changed our whole approach to the way we go to services and we carry out an inspection and we say what we think of these services. So we've got these new health and social care standards. And the old standards were very prescriptive inputs. They lent themselves to a checklist. So I've been in regulation for a while, and when I first started as an inspector, I had my checklist. Very prescriptive inputs. Records, can I see your records, please? Can I check all the health and safety of the environment? Can I go through all your policies, please? And often, that took place in the manager's office. There wasn't necessarily a correlation between compliance with those inputs and the actual quality of experience of children using the service. Some services were incredibly well organized. At the end of the day, they knew what the government inspector was coming to look at. Full compliance, but something missing in terms of the relationships, the trust, the quality of the experience of children. And equally, we would have other services where maybe there was a bit of health and safety needed to be looked at. Maybe it was the odd policy that needed to be updated. Not everything was tickety-boo. And we thought, hmm, I'm making a whole load of requirements and recommendations, formal recommendations, for this service to come up to scratch. When actually some of these services were the best services in terms of the quality of the relationships, the quality, the depth of the experience of children. So we found that our measures weren't actually cutting to the chase. So we wanted to have a much better measure. So we changed the standards. So what we've done is we've tried to describe the quality of care that people should experience rather than all the proxy indicators that might possibly indicate quality, but often don't. We asked the so what question. And we had standards that go right across early learning and childcare, social care, adult services, community justice, recognizing that the needs of people were often common across age ranges and across different needs. And also for the standards not just to apply to the individual service that happened to be getting an inspection, but the quality of the service is also to do with what government does, what your local government do in terms of funding, what your local government does in terms of the support, the commissioning, how many services are private, how many are statutory, how many are run by charities. So we wanted that planning, 
that coordination, the commissioning of services to be also included as well as the individual service subject to an inspection report. Their Scottish government standards, I was seconded from the care inspectorate to produce these standards on behalf of Scotland and I was working with health colleagues. So the standards apply right across health and care trying to have a much more integrated approach. At the end of the day, we had our different jargon, but often we were talking about the same stuff. That chart just shows that only a minority of the services are actually licensed, subject to formal regulation. All of our health services, the NHS, not subject to any licensing. The same with social work provision. And we wanted to shift the culture we wanted, as inspectors, to be a bit less scary. And of course, we were operating with our checklist quite a deficit model. It was about finding fault in people rather than encouraging good practice and helping services improve. So we've moved. And it is a journey we're on. We're not entirely there yet, absolutely. We've moved from this compliance approach, fairly deficit approach, to much more collaboration. And we involved children and organisations representing children. And this organisation, Who Cares Scotland, led by, by, by children and young people who have experienced being looked after and cared for by the government, by the local authority. And one thing that they were really strong on, why all these procedures? Why all these policies? We grew up in your care. Where was the love? Where was the compassion? And so it really influenced our whole approach to standards. So we wanted to come at it from a child and young person's point of view, whether or not that child was experiencing early learning in childcare, in a nursery, with a childminder, or indeed whether in children's residential care. Scotland's Commissioner for Children and Young People also very helpful in developing these standards. And so these are the principles that run through the standards. And if you go on to the Care Inspectorate website, all the materials I'm talking about will be available there. But you can see one of the principles, compassion. We started off with a principle of safety. Now, we're not saying that none of those inputs are relevant, of course. If an inspector finds an unsafe situation, of course there'll be a formal recommendation on the back of that. But nine times out of ten, there was no problem with that. We wanted to move on. So what question? What's the actual experience of children at this service? The general standards, all written in the first person. So if you get hold of the document, Go on our website, you'll see every standard is written from the I point of view. I experience high quality care and support that's right for me. I'm fully involved in all decisions about my care and support. I have confidence in the people. They're relationship, rights-based standards, as opposed to all those technical black and white measures that we had. And I'm just going to talk about outdoor play. And the old standards, these are what the old standards said about outdoor play. And of course, you can imagine, the inspector goes to the service, can I see your outdoor play facility, please? And it involved making sure that all the equipment was safe, everybody was secure, the right numbers of staff, things looked in order. And it was very much that minimum deficit approach that we took. Old national care standards was about essentially checking the playground safety. Didn't need to be children there. So we've tried with the new standards to be much more explicit about actually what we would like to see in terms of children. So they're out every day. They get the opportunity to play outdoors every day and regularly explore a natural environment. Because what we were finding is that a lot of staff 
were assuming that the inspectorate would not want children to take any kind of risks outdoors. Climbing trees, no, no. Anything to do with fire, no, no. Even playing near water, danger. And they were assuming that we wouldn't want to see that. So we needed to be much more explicit and give permission and encourage some of that new approach to risk. It was really important for us to be able to talk in detail about what we meant. Because that disconnect that's happened across the Western world with us and nature, and I think in Sweden you've actually retained it much more than we have. But we needed to be explicit to people. And so we produced a whole range of different practice resources, talking and describing and having practical examples of children engaging in risky play. We wanted to talk about the story, the journey that we'd been on as regulators, absolutely not allowing forest kindergartens. Now, you've been way ahead of the game, and we've been wanting to see it happen, but there was a problem with our regulation. No hot running water out in the woods. Oh, my goodness, you could possibly register a nursery out there. And we wanted to tell the story of how we got over that problem and how we flexed our rules. And we have seen an absolute flourishing of outdoor play. At the end of the day, there's a lot more benefits for children than risks. We all know that sitting in this room. But we have to go out there and we have to really explain why. And that a child having soil in its mouth is not necessarily the end of the world. My goodness, we all take risks in our life. And that's the standard that we came up with on risk. And there'll be a whole load of practice documents to support that fairly simple statement. But it's moving from a risk-averse approach to a much more risk-positive approach. It was also touching on some of the rich heritage. And I think in Sweden, you've retained some of the fantastic deep culture that we inherited from the likes of Froebel. Patrick Geddes got a mention yesterday. And in Scotland, Robert Owen set up this mill in New Lanark. They say it's the world's first nursery school. I'm not sure about that. But that first nursery in Scotland was absolutely founded on outdoor play principles. Get the children out to the fields, bring back the mushrooms, bring back the carrots, all the rest of it. And we'd lost that connection. One of the first major investment in nurseries at the turn of the century, turn of the 20th century, 19th to 20th, were these open-air kindergartens. Child gardens, we called them in Scotland. And we wanted really just to touch on some of that. Some of these services are still operating today in terms of buildings with full access to the outdoors. Children free to go in and out as absolutely good for abelian principles in action. Sleeping outside, eating outside. Yesterday I was at a fantastic workshop talking about food and about vegetables. And we wanted to have standards that spoke directly to that. Those services where children were able to grow food, prepare that food, and have it on the table and share that as a meal, wow, fantastic things happened. All those curriculum standards ticked, no problem. And we wanted to celebrate that and show it in reality in part of our publications instead of all the endless technical rules. Every child with a plot was part of that early philosophy that we inherited. And again, backed up with lots of practice documents. Have we got rid of animals? Have we regulated them out of childcare? used to be common to have a guinea pig as part of the nursery. And so we've brought some publications to the fore to encourage animals to come back in all types 
of care services. And again, the workshop yesterday talked about that. It's something we've lost and we want to try to bring back. I'm going to quickly flip through the next slides because I realize that I'm running over time. But I just wanted to talk about love and compassion. And some of the old standards did not touch at all on that. In fact, when we look at the warmth, the physical warmth, some of the statements in the old standards were incredibly negative. You can be confident that staff never touch you in an appropriate manner, in an inappropriate manner. We wanted to be much more explicit about the kinds of things we were wanting. And just to finish, on 310, as a child, a young person, I feel valued, loved, and secure. I've had a lot of questions about this standard. Henry, how on earth are you going to measure that? But at the end of the day, we're social workers. We're nurses. People professions. We're not health and safety officers. We wanted to talk about what that looks like in a professional setting. And on that note, I will finish. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.